Are you looking to visit the Vatican City but don't know how? Well, it's your lucky day. Stick around because today we're going to tell you all you need to know about the smallest country in the world. Stay tuned! Hello, I'm Rick. And I'm Andrea. And today we'll tell you all you need to know about the Vatican City, the smallest country in the world. Mm -hmm. But first, if you like translated videos like this one, now is the great time to hit the subscribe button down below so you never miss any future videos. Especially these wonderful ones we make about Italy. Absolutely. So let's begin. What is the Vatican City? The Vatican City is an independent country that was founded in 1929. The head of the state is the Pope. It is located in Rome, on the west bank of the River Tiber. It is also the smallest country in the world, as we said. Hmm. In fact, it is only 856 meters long, or 946 yards, and 741 meters wide, or 781 yards. To put the dimension into perspective, it is a comparison with Central Park in New York City. Almost all of the country is surrounded by ancient walls. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. The Vatican City has its own post office, a train station, and its own bank. And the total population is 618 people. Is that all? Yes, that's all. <laughs> the Vatican City also has its own police and army, the famous Swiss Guard. Mm -hmm. They are very well dressed. They are. Mm. The currency is the Vatican City is the Euro, and the official language is Italian. But at the Vatican Museums, all the signs are in different languages. So that's good for everyone, right? Exactly. How to get to the Vatican City. So, to get to the Vatican City, you, you first have to be in Rome. Now, if you want to know how to reach Rome, you can check out this video right here. Alright, so from Rome's city centre, you have a few options to get to the Vatican City. And the first one, our favourite, is walking. In fact, from the Pantheon, it's only a 20 minutes walk to reach the Vatican City. While from the Colosseum, it'll take you about 45 minutes walking to get there. Now, from the Spanish Steps, it's about a 30 minute walk to the Vatican, and from the Trevi Fountain as well, 30 minutes. The second option is by metro. Now, the closest metro station to the Vatican is the Ottaviano station, which is on the line A. From Termini station, it takes about 20 minutes or so subway ride to Ottaviano, and then from there it's a short 10 minute walk. Now, if you take the metro from the Spanish steps, that'll take you about 17 minutes to get to the station, and, and then again, the 10 minute walk. By the way, if you want to know more, about taking the subway in Rome, here's a video about it. Alright, so uh, let's say you're coming from the Colosseum, you want another way. Well, you can also take a bus to the Vatican. And bus number 81 takes you to the Vatican City in about 50 minutes, while from the Termini station, the bus to the Vatican City is number 64, and that takes you to the Vatican in about 40 minutes. Lastly, you can also take a taxi. Now, this is very convenient, but it might take some extra time in rush hour because of traffic. What can I see in the Vatican City? So, what can you actually see in the Vatican City? Well, most of the country is actually closed to the public. Oh. There are only three areas that are open to the public. First is St. Peter's Square and the St. Peter Basilica. Second are the Vatican Museums and the Sistine Chapel, and the third is the Paul VI Auditorium. Mm. All the other areas are accessible by invite or by special permit, and they are closely guarded, so you cannot walk into those areas freely. So you can't just like knock on the door no, and walk in. Okay, great. <laughs> the most famous and important Vatican landmark to visit in the Vatican City are St. Peter's Square and St. Peter's Basilica. Once in the square, you can cross the border line. Actually, you can take the famous photo with one foot in Italy and the foot in the Vatican, which is kind of cool, actually. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And then go visit the Basilica. The Basilica is free to enter, and you can visit on your own. Mm -hmm. Also, the crypt of, of the Vatican, or the Vatican Grotto, where the tombs of the last popes are, is also, also free. Mm -hmm. 
If you want to tr visit Treasure or climb to the top of the dome, then you have to buy the tickets. And the tickets can be bought in the church. Mm. Climbing the dome costs about 10 euros, and this involves taking an elevator and then climbing the last 320 steps. Or you can pay 8 euros, or so save 2 euros, and climb all the 551 <laughs> steps all the way to the top. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For the treasure, the tickets cost about 6 euros. Uh, what is this treasure you keep talking about? The treasure are a bunch of gold artifacts and gold chandelier and gold and gold um, candle oil that, that from the Vatican. It's pretty cool, actually. Huh. The second Vatican landmark that is open to the public in the Vatican City is the Vatican Museums and the Sistine Chapel. Hmm. The Vatican Museums are not free, and you will need to buy a ticket to get in. The museum are among the most famous museums in the world, and they are visited by millions of tourists every year. So, as you can imagine, they are really, really busy. For this reason, we strongly recommend you to buy the tickets in advance, yeah. to have skipped the very, very long line at the entrance. Mm -hmm. By the way, we'll leave a link in the description below to buy the ticket to skip the line. Yeah, the official tickets, because you don't want to get, you don't get the, the, the wrong tickets. No, you don't. The entrance to the Vatican Museum is on the north side of the Vatican City, on Viale Vaticano. There are two metro stations close by the Vatican Museum that are approximately at the same distance from each other and from the ticket office. These two stations are Ottaviano and Cipro, both on line A. The museums are massive and they can be overwhelming. It is almost impossible to see everything in one shot. Mm -hmm. For this reason, we recommend you take a guided tour to be able to see the most important areas of the museum without getting like lost in there, because yeah. they're so big. One thing to know is that the museums do not have air conditioning, so in the middle of the summer they can be really, really hot. For this reason, it would be better to plan your visit either early in the morning or at night. And they do have a really cool night tour. Absolutely. In order to visit the Sistine Chapel, you have to go through the Vatican Museum, and the visit at the chapel is included in the same ticket of the museum. Mm -hmm. Once you arrive at the chapel, you have to keep in mind that taking photos is not permitted. Well... <laughs> <laughs> also, the chapel is usually packed with tourists admiring Michelangelo's masterpiece. So, for this reason, you won't have a huge amount of time inside, because people keep pushing you out of the chapel. It definitely feels that way. From the Vatican Museums, you can have a glimpse of the Vatican Garden. These beautiful gardens are close to the public, but you can see them decently well mm -hmm. from the museums. Sure. The last place in the Vatican City that you can visit is the Paul VI Audience Hall. But you can only visit this during the Popal Audience. These are held every Wednesday when the Pope is in the Vatican City. You can find the link in the description below if you want to buy a ticket for the Popal Audience. Yeah, that's interesting, because we've actually never done that. No, we maybe, maybe we should on our next trip to Rome. Why not? In St. Peter's Square, you can also visit the post office and send yourself uh, or your friend um, a postcard with the Vatican stamp, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. cool. Almost um, every Sunday when the Pope is in town, at noon the Pope does the blessing from the window in the St. Peter's Square. So if you want to see the Pope in another way, this is a great opportunity to go there on Sunday at noon. Good advice. So, how long does it take to visit the Vatican City? Well, in order to visit all of the Vatican landmarks that are accessible to the public, you're going to need several hours. I would say all, just plan the whole day. First, to visit St. Peter's Basilica, you'll have to consider that you're going to have to go through the metal detector and the security check, and the line to do this can be really long. Once inside the Basilica, you're going to need at least an hour to see all of the incredible artifacts, such as the Michelangelo Pieta and the Bernini Altar. Also, if you want to climb the dome, you're also going to need at least another hour or more to climb all of those hundreds of stairs. Now, to visit the Vatican Museums and the Sistine Chapel, you're also going to need several hours. First thing to consider is to buy the ticket in advance. And you can buy your ticket at the door, but the line is also going to be incredibly long. So if you do that, you're just going to be wasting more than an hour in line. Now, once inside the museums, you'll have to plan at least three to four hours for your visit. So if you're visiting Rome in one day, I don't recommend you to visit the Vatican Museums. You're not going to have enough time. 
By the way, if you want to know more about what you can see in Rome in one day, check out this video up here. What do I need to visit the Vatican City? First of all, you do not need a passport to visit the Vatican City. Mm -hmm. There's no border control. No. If you are planning to go to St. Peter's Basilica, you need to consider a dress code. It is mandatory to wear clothes that cover your shoulders and your knees. So no tank tops, no skimpy shorts, no. No exceptions. <clears throat> no exceptions. Also, you will need to go through the security check and the metal detector. So you might experience some very long lines for these, especially in peak season. And don't bring any sharp objects yeah. either, because they're going to be confiscated. Yeah. If this is your first time in the Vatican City, you might want to consider a guided tour of the Basilica, the Vatican Museum, and the Sistine Chapel. Doing this, you will have a much better understanding of what you're, uh, what you're admiring and all the masterpieces. Mm -hmm. Also, the guide will tell you all about the history and what you're seeing, and as we said, it can be very overwhelming, so if you don't have a guide, you must, might miss something that is very important. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this video about the Vatican City, and um, perhaps it'll inspire you to visit the smallest country in the world during your next stay in Rome. As usual, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below because we love to hear and respond to you. In the meantime, we will see you in our next video. Ciao! Ciao.